Mario. Is there another name so synonymous with gaming? I'll be the first to admit, I'm a Mario fanboy. I always have been. That doesn't mean, however, that I automatically like every game that comes out. In fact, far from it. But I wanted to check out Mario Odyssey. And after playing it, I guess you could say I've been somewhat inspired to make a video on it. Yes, I played games before Mario. From the Intellivision to the Atari ST, I knew early on I liked gaming. But when I saw Super Mario Brothers being played at a friend's house one day, I immediately became obsessed with this game, which to my young gaming experience seemed to be this endless world. When my grandfather finally bought us our first NES, that love affair with Mario games began and lasted throughout all the years, with each new game released. Super Mario World, in fact, is still to this day the game I remember anticipating the most before its release. I remember for months reading Nintendo Power, thinking how much I wanted to play Super Mario World. It's almost 30 years later and I'm still playing Mario games. Now I got Mario Odyssey on the day of release, which funny enough is the first launch day Mario game I've ever got. I have enjoyed a lot of the newer released Mario games, some of my favorite being the Mario Galaxy games on the Wii. And I figured that this game would be more of the same. But to my delight, it was so much more. Now it would be easy to call this just another Mario game. And while yes, it does follow the same structure since going 3D in Mario 64, doing so would be ignoring the obvious love letter that this game is to fans and the franchise. Now since the old days where Mario found a leaf or a cape and could fly, every Mario game has something new it brings to the table. The gimmick, for lack of a better word in this game, is the ability to throw your hat onto enemies and objects and to possess them and use their abilities to get you through the stages. It's kind of like Kirby in that regard, among other games. I really enjoyed this aspect of the game and it was always fun to see what special abilities each new hat throw would grant you. Now it's a Mario game. The story is, well, a Mario story. The princess has been captured and it's your job to find her. Essentially, you're stopping a wedding. Now to do this, you have to power up your airship by collecting moons. That's this game's version of stars. Collecting moons unlock new kingdoms. Now these kingdoms are varied and fun to explore and there are a lot of moons to find, so many. In fact, there are over 900 moons in this game. Now, most of these moons are optional and are not required to beat the game. But for me, that's where the real challenge of this game lies, in finding all these moons. In fact, you might be able to even say that the game really starts once you beat the main quest, which admittedly is pretty easy. Now, the reason I say that is because you can unlock new kingdoms after you beat the game by going back and finding new moons. Well, and also some of the kingdoms just get unlocked because you beat the game. A lot of these moons are very easy to find, but others do take some brain power to figure out how to get to them. In fact, for me, one of the coolest things of this game was after you beat the game, you can unlock the Mushroom Kingdom. Now, does this remind you of something? Yes, this is straight up Mario 64, along with blocky 64-bit skin Mario. This is without a doubt one of the coolest things that I found in this game. And this Mushroom Kingdom is not just lazily tacked on, it's its own huge kingdom with moons to find, secrets to discover, areas to explore. It's a fun kingdom to play in and of itself. Yes, a lot of you know that I'm not the biggest N64 guy out there, however, Super Mario 64 Man, how could you not love that game? I absolutely love that game, one of the few on the system. So to go back and have that callback to it is just such an awesome touch in this game. It's those callbacks to previous games that I really think makes this game extra special. The side-scrolling Super Mario Brothers segments that are thrown throughout this entire game are an awesome touch and fun to play. Playing as original Mario, fighting Donkey Kong in pseudo New York with singing and fireworks going on was one of the coolest moments of the entire game for me and somewhat surreal. It was a fresh take on such a familiar friend 
Almost every past Mario game has at least a small reference, and it was fun to find a new nod to a previous game, from Super Mario World enemies that you haven't seen since Super Mario World, to even the rocket in Super Mario Bros. 2. And this might be a little bit more obscure, but is this Sphinx a reference to Super Mario Land? Even the final stage seems inspired by Super Mario Galaxy. Nintendo wanted this game to not only itself be an odyssey, but an odyssey of a cool nostalgia trip through the entire Mario franchise. Now I love these touches and they are much more than just a silly gimmick. Look at this. I'm playing Mario 1 with N64 3D Mario. Now yes, of course, again, the main quest is pretty easy, but the challenge comes from after you beat the game. Whether it be from trying to find every moon in a kingdom, or simple challenges that are unlocked on the dark side of the moon, the game keeps on giving long after it's quote unquote completed. If you wanted to complete everything in this game, you're gonna be here a while. It truly is an odyssey. Now the boss fights are pretty typical for a Mario game. You figure out the pattern, hit the boss three times, they're dead. They're usually pretty easy for the most part. Which brings me to one of the things that I really don't like about the game, or I think could have been better, and that's the Brutals. As characters, they really just don't do much for me, and you do seem to fight them again and again and again, which does get kind of stale, but it wasn't too bad. I much prefer the more inventive bosses thrown throughout the game. And dare I say, they wasted an opportunity to bring back the Koopalings, the Koopa Kids. Granted, the Koopa Kids have been done again and again and again, but if we're calling this game a nostalgia trip throughout all the entire games of the franchise, it would just make sense to also bring back the Koopalings. And I have always had a deep nostalgia for the Koopalings. I'm not exactly sure why that is, other than the fact that I always thought they were extremely cool. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I absolutely love Super Mario Bros. 3 and Super Mario World, and the Koopa Kids played a huge role in those games. So I would have liked to see them back for this game. Obviously, I'm a sucker for nostalgia, and maybe that's why I love this game so much, is because of the nostalgia. They're tugging at my heartstrings a little bit. And maybe that clouds my judgment a little bit, but I think that most people would agree that this game exceeds all expectations and is probably one of the best games of the year. This game keeps me smiling. And when you break down a game into its essence, that's the most important factor, fun. And for me, this excels in the fun factor. In most games, I find collecting items boring and tedious, but somehow this game won me over in that avenue. I love collecting moons, exploring these kingdoms, and trying to discover new secret kingdoms. When playing Mario as a kid, finding secret locations, exploring, discovering new areas that in your mind seemed like you were the only one to have ever found them, was one of the most rewarding and fun things about those games. Jumping up on Mario Bros. 1 and seeing these warp tunnels, that was one of the coolest moments for me. Finding a set of clouds with coins just in a random part of a stage of Super Mario Bros. 3 that you didn't realize was there encouraged you to look around and find new things. I have that same childlike wonderment with this game as I explore each new kingdom and always seem to find something that I missed in the previous visit. I remember the first time I ever played Super Mario Bros. 3. It was jaw-dropping, as I had never experienced a platforming game that felt like it was such a huge adventure. This game delivers that same experience for me. I feel like a kid again, just carefree, having simple fun playing a game. A game that doesn't try to be more than it is, but simply embraces the tried and true formula that has made it so popular. Mario Odyssey is an amazing game, but it was so much more for me. It was that reminder of why I fell in love with gaming and the Mario franchise so long ago. Twenty-nine years ago, my grandfather bought us our first NES, giving me a lifetime of memories. Memories of the family gathered around in the living room playing a game. Memories of my grandfather watching us yell at the TV as we keep dying on World 8 of Super Mario Bros. Memories of giving my cousin Chris an unplugged controller because I didn't want to share my playing time of Mario 3 with him. I couldn't have imagined back then what gaming today would have looked like or played like. 
Nor could I have ever imagined that I would still be playing new Mario games as an adult. <laughs> but here I am, enjoying Mario Odyssey as if I was 10 years old. Forever grateful for a franchise that has been a part of me for most of my life. Providing me with that much needed escape from the reality of adulthood. Thank you Nintendo for 29 years of memories. Thank you, Mario Odyssey. Those freaking cats start running around, chasing each other, causing racket. Literally, every time I start filming, it's, it's like they know. It really is like they know. They know when I'm filming and they troll.